21 days, 21 hours, 9 minutes and 2 seconds. That's how long the U.S. House of Representatives was without a speaker. And after three failed attempts, Republicans unanimously voted in Mike Johnson, an extreme far-right religious ideologue from Louisiana who my, my colleague Ali Vitale dubbed Jim Jordan with a jacket and a smile. Joining me now, Delaware Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester. She is a Democratic Senate candidate in Delaware and a national co-chair for President Biden's re-election campaign. Uh, Senator Rochester, thank you very much for coming back to the Sunday show. Just you were elected the same year as Mike Johnson to, to Congress. Your thoughts on him being elevated to speaker? Well, first of all, Jonathan, it is great to be on the show with you again. Um, I have to tell you, as you said, um, Mike Johnson and I came into office uh, in 2016. Uh, as freshman, I remember him well talking about civility and working together across uh, party lines on legislation. And those people uh, that know me in Delaware know that I will work with just about anybody to get things done for Delawareans and for the American people. But the things that we are learning and have learned uh, about our new speaker uh, and where he stands on the issues are very concerning. I mean, the fact that he has championed a total abortion ban with no exceptions for rape, incest, or the life of the mother is troubling. The fact that he has proposed, along with his colleagues, trillions of dollars of cuts for Social Security and Medicare. And these are programs that seniors rely on, but also have worked and earned. Um, also, I think personally, as I think about the fact that um, he is um, really one of the leaders of the election denier efforts and is somebody who has worked as a co-chair of the Biden-Harris campaign the first time and also now um, to sit on the House floor. And I like to sit right in the middle, in the center, so I can hear everything that's going on, to hear his colleagues call him MAGA Mike, and then for him to be so staunchly against LBGTQ rights, um, it, it, it is beyond troubling. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, what we're going to see is how is he going to be able to govern with a four to five seat uh, majority when these issues, he is really on the wrong side for most Americans. And so what I can say unequivocally is that Democrats will continue to fight for seniors and making sure that they have what they deserve, women's reproductive rights, our LGBTQ plus brothers and sisters, and for democracy. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to fight for. Well, Congressman, speaking of, of legislating, um, there's a November 17th deadline that is looming, a government shutdown that is looming. I'm just wondering, can, can Speaker Johnson, who has gone on the record saying that he is interested in a continuing resolution that will go through January or through April, can he get that done and still survive without triggering another motion to vacate? Well, again, it's kind of interesting. As I said, sometimes sitting in that, that little center spot, I get to hear um, one, one of his colleagues came over afterwards and said, well, we'll see how long he lasts. And um, that's going to be important. What I can tell you is when you look at the Democrats in the last session, we had equally a small, like five, person majority, yeah. and we were able to pass some of the most transformational legislation in the country, everything from the Chips and Science Act to the PAC Act for our veterans to the Inflation Reduction Act to lower the cost of things and save our, our planet. So it can be done. And we as Democrats held out, you know, Hakeem Jeffries held out our hands and said, let's do have a bipartisan path forward. He, they decided to vote for the most extreme, one of the most extreme members, and to vote for him unanimously. And we will see uh, what, what he does as speaker. Uh, but I can tell you this, again, Democrats are going to continue to stand up for those issues and fight for those issues that the American people sent us here to fight for. As always, Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester of Delaware, thank you very much for coming to The Sunday Show. Thank you, Jonathan. And joining me now is Vermont Congresswoman Becca Ballant. She's a member of the House Judiciary and Budget Committees. Congresswoman Ballant, thank you very much for, for coming back. Um, uh, since you are on the Budget Committee, how, 
how <laughs> how worried are you <laughs> that um, the government's going to shut down on November yeah, on am. November seventeenth? Yes, of course I'm worried. Anyone paying attention has to be worried. This is a man, uh, Mike Johnson, who has um, made it very clear that he wants incredibly strong cuts to Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security. He is completely beholden to the extremist wing. And, you know, it's hard to say extremist wing at this point because the moderates folded uh, like a cheap fan this week. They said that they would not support uh, Jim Jim Jordan, because he was too extreme and was an election denier. And then they turned right around and not only elected uh, an election denier, but somebody who argued, you know, before the Supreme Court that the the uh, election of Joe Biden should be overturned. And so it's very difficult to see how we uh, escape without a government shutdown. And I have very little ability in the Republican conference to govern. They, these people are not serious about governing. Well, well, speaking of that, I mean, the next big the next big fights in Congress are one, the shutdown, but also delivering aid to Israel and Ukraine. As I showed to Senator Kane, your colleague, Senator, I'm sorry, Congressman Meeks came on and said, you know, we want the Senate to pass a, a, a joint Israel Ukraine aid bill basically to jam the house, to jam you guys in the house, to jam the Republican majority, to force them to pass those together. Do you believe the Republican-led House um, could get that package passed? Well, so here's what I want people to understand. You have a Republican conference right now uh, in the House that has been working against the Constitution, has been working against democracy. So when we look at our allies abroad, uh, including Ukraine and Israel, and in the fact that you have a moment right now with the rise of autocrats around uh, the world, and you have a, a Republican conference that is much more complementary of, of Putin and Viktor Orban in in Hungary than they are of, of our allies. It's incredibly uh, troubling. And, you know, I, I just heard Congresswoman Blunt Rochester talking, someone who I, I respect so much. And, and she was talking about, like, what is the what is the Republican conference, you know, what is their vision for America right now? And it really is around taking away civil rights, attacking um, our very constitution. And, you know, I've been saying here at home that Mike Johnson's uh, elevation to the head of the House of Representatives is fitting this week for Halloween because he is at times creepy, cruel, and crafty. And when you look at his record, Americans should be deeply troubled by mm -hmm. who they have elevated as their leader and the important issues that we have to confront that he is not at all uh, ready to do the job. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of, uh, of democracy, I mean, as I mentioned before, the New York Times is called um, Mike Johnson, the most important architect of the Electoral College challenge um, in, in uh, of the 2020 election. Are you concerned about how now a Speaker Johnson will act when it comes time to certify the 2024 presidential election? Oh, absolutely, because he's not just an election denier. As you said, he was part of a case to try to overturn uh, the election. And so he is somebody who uses his legal experience and skills uh, to essentially try to usher in a Christian theocracy. And don't trust my words, you know, go back and look at what he has said, not just in his legal arguments, but also in his uh, speech to the House when he was first elected. It was completely and totally about him as uh, looking to the Bible to, you know, guide his leadership. And so the day that the conference coalesced around him as their leader, a member of the press asked him, and rightly so, like, how do you come before the American people when you are an election denier? And this reporter who's trying to do the work of the people and shedding a light on you know what the conference is all about she was shouted down by 
uh, the Republican conference told to shut up, that we're not going to talk about uh, election denialism, that that's where we're at right now. You mm -hmm. can't even expect the Speaker of the House to answer a legitimate question. And when followed up the next few days about his position, he said, well, you know where I stand on this, meaning I don't believe Biden is the rightful president. And, and I believe Trump won the election. This should be uh, scary for everyone in this country right now. Yeah, that was uh, Congresswoman Virginia Fox, who was who was screaming, shut up um, at the reporter who asked the question. And also in his interview with Sean Hannity on Fox, Speaker Johnson said, just open the Bible if you want to know what where I stand on things. Congresswoman Becca Ballin of Vermont, thank you very much, as always, for coming to the Sunday show.